Hello, everybody, and welcome back to To Be Like Christ for our Bible study through Deuteronomy chapter 2 today. If you haven't been to the website and gotten the free PDF that you're going to see up on the screen, downloaded it, you can do that. There's a link down in the description below, and all of the studies through Deuteronomy and all the studies that we've already done are on that website. Okay, Deuteronomy chapter 2. When do the events of this chapter take place? Well, this occurred right after the Israelites had spent 40 years wandering in the wilderness. So they've just finished up their wanderings. Now Moses is presenting the law to them, and that's what Deuteronomy is all about. The book of Deuteronomy tells us that it opens on the first day of the 11th month in the 40th year after the Israelites left Egypt. In terms of our characters, we have the Israelites. This is a, a large nation of people at this point. They're the descendants of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and they're on their way to the land of Canaan because God promised to give them that land as a home. Their leader is our second character, that is Moses. Moses was God's selected man to lead the people out of Egypt and take them to Canaan, and God had a special relationship with Moses. He talked to Moses directly, and then Moses communicated God's words to the people. We've also got two uh, side characters here. Well, they're, they're featured in a couple chapters in the Old Testament, but the first one is a guy named Sihon. Sihon was the king of the Amorites. And then we've got Og, O-G. You can name your kid Og if you want to. Og was king of Bashan, and these are two kings who the Israelites defeated in battle. We'll talk about that in a little bit. And then down to our map, where did these events take place? Deuteronomy chapter 1 verse 5 tells us that Moses spoke the words that are recorded in Deuteronomy in Moab, probably on the plains of Moab where the Israelites were camped, and that was near Pisgah. And you can see Pisgah, the mountain on the map, just to the east of the Dead Sea or the Salt Sea. This chapter tells us about the Israelites' travels through a place called Seir, Moab, Ammon, and the land of the Amorites, which you can see most of those places on the map. Now moving on over to our outline, the first 15 verses I've entitled 38 More Years in the Wilderness. If you remember in Deuteronomy chapter 1, it left off with the first time that the children of Israel arrived at the borders of Canaan. They sent those 12 spies out. The 12 spies convinced all of the people, or at least 10 of the 12 spies came back and they, they didn't have any faith. They convinced all the people that they weren't going to be able to take the land. Moses is telling this new generation about these old historical events that happened about 30 years previously. And Deuteronomy chapter 2 picks up right there and it's going to continue this history of Israel as Moses reminds these people where they've been and what they've been through. At the end of Deuteronomy chapter 1, we talked about God cursing the Israelites to wander in the wilderness because of their lack of faith to give them the land of Canaan. They spent, quote, many days, which we know was about 38 years, in the wilderness before God finally gave them permission to return to Canaan and try again. And that's where we're picking up in Deuteronomy. So as the Israelites finished up their time in the wilderness and were headed towards Canaan, God told the Israelites that they were to travel through the land of Seir, but they were not to fight with the people there and the inhabitants because they were descendants of Jacob's brother Esau. So they were related to the Israelites. God told the Israelites then to go through the land of Moab. But once again, God prohibited them from fighting with the people because the Moabites were descendants of a guy named Lot, who you may remember from the book of Genesis. He was the nephew of Abraham. The Israelites then crossed the brook known as the Zered Brook, chapter 2, verse 13, and that was the point that marked the end of the wanderings in the wilderness. Every person in the older generation who was 20 years old and over the first time that they had come to Canaan and were faithless and sent out those, those 12 spies, everyone who at that point was 20 years old and older died in the wilderness. That was God's curse for their faithlessness. So, so now this new generation has come to the border of Canaan and they're going to try again to do what God wants them to do. Our second section, verses 16 through 37, recount some more of the Israelites' travels and a battle that they had with the Amorites. I've entitled this, Israel Advances Towards Canaan and Defeats Sihon. So God told the Israelites to continue on their journey towards the borders of the land into the land of the Ammonites. However, once again, they were not to fight with the Ammonites because they too were relatives of Lot. Then God directed Moses to lead the people into the land of the Amorites. They were ruled by King Sihon. Moses made an attempt to make peaceful arrangements with King Sihon to pass through his land, but 
the text tells us that God hardened the heart of Sihon and he refused to let Israel pass. Sihon actually brought his army out against Israel, but the Lord gave the Israelites the victory and they defeated Sihon. We're told that the Israelites completely destroyed Sihon's kingdom, and Moses said, quote, We captured all his cities at that time and devoted to destruction every city, men, women, and children. And so that is Deuteronomy chapter 2. We are still recounting the history and the, the journey from Egypt to Canaan. In terms of our application for today, this chapter is a good example of how God directs the rise and the fall of kingdoms. God preserves certain nations with plans to use them in the future, nations like Moab and Ammon, but he determined judgment on other kingdoms like the Amorites and King Sihon. He hardened the heart of certain rulers to lead their nations into ruin by fighting against God's people, by resisting God's will, just as the text tells us that he did to, to Pharaoh's heart. And Pharaoh ended up leading Egypt into humiliation and destruction. In this story, God organized these blessings and these overthrows of the nations using the people of Israel directly and their military force. God's power over the nations, though, it didn't end with Moses and the Israelites. The Old Testament is full of examples of God exalting certain nations and humbling other nations and making us aware that it was his doing. So this is still happening today, and this is the application for us. This is the realization that we need to have to understand the way that the world works and it's governed by its creator. It is God who still appoints world leaders and allows nations to either flourish or to diminish. And in the New Testament, Romans chapter 13, verses 1 through 2, and other passages make that clear to us.